Club at 22, the Rangers podcast is supported by Manscaped, who is the best in men's below the waist grooming. Manscaped offers precision engineered tools for your family jewels. Go to manscaped.com and get 20% off plus free shipping with code CLUB at 22. Your balls will thank you. Hello everyone and welcome to Club Preview here on Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. We're here to round up some Rangers views and look ahead to our next match, which is the Scottish Cup tie against Stirling Albion on Friday evening at Ibrox. I am your host, Scott Carney, and joining me is Ryan Hamer. Ryan, how are you? I'm good, mate. I'm good. Um, just a bit done with the, the week at work. 20th of the month is a big day at my work. You can of work all all months to get to the 20th and then press a button and then it's all done. <laughs> Resetting back back for the rest of it. So, um, I am ready for the weekend, put that way. Yeah, definitely, mate. I, my new job requires me to work weekends from time to time, uh, but I am off for the next two days. Doesn't quite feel the same. I've said this before. I am in support of the, the missus being pregnant, mate. I decided to do a dry January, which has been fucking brutal, man, because my body doesn't know when my next day off is because I usually drink when I'm off the next day and I've not had a beer. So it's days are kind of rolling into into one and I'm not really sure when my, my days off are. However, tomorrow night I get to go back to Ibrooks and I cannot wait. I know it's only against Stirling Albion, but there's nothing quite like going to Ibrooks uh, at night to see a game under the lights. So really looking forward to seeing that see to seeing that and to seeing my dad. I've not seen him for a wee while, so I get to see my old man. Um anyway. Um, just before we get into things, uh, you can join the channel for only 99p. Um, uh, the, the link for that will be below this podcast. And if you don't want to subscribe to us, you can buy the podcast at Coffee. You would really be really be supporting us and helping us grow. Uh, and I can't thank everybody enough for people that have became a Club Act 22 supporter and who have kindly bought us uh, a coffee. It is very, very much appreciated. And as always, please subscribe to the channel and like the videos. So, Ryan, before we actually get into proper Rangers news... A wee bit of backlashes came from um, Tuesday night, mate. Uh, I, I almost went viral, mate, with my comments on Scott Brown, which I couldn't quite believe. Uh, it's as if everybody didn't know that the guy was actually a fanny. But, yeah, it's been it's been an interesting um, couple of days with the, some of the comments on YouTube. Now, I don't mind Celtic fans tuning into this channel, mate, and watching our videos. I don't mind supporters from another team. However... I don't understand supporters of other teams, or moon howlers, if you will, that um, actively seek us out. Uh, and by that, I mean seek us out, watch the entire video, try and pick up on anything that they can, and leave a comment. It's a sad existence. I've seen quite a few comments. Obviously, I've, I thank every one of them for supporting their pod, <laughs> because it is great to know that they're watching. Um, I can't think of anything worse than sitting watching a a Celtic broadcast, if there is such a thing. Um, I think it's great that they're, they're watching. I've seen a few comments and I replied to them, just said thanks very much. But there's definitely a lack of lack of intelligence. You've got to be put through some sort of IQ test before you're allowed to make a comment <laughs> on a on a YouTube video. And these guys would fail that rapidly. First hurdle they would go down. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I've, I've been called all names under the sun, mate, to be honest, and I get some sectarian abuse thrown in for good measure as well, and they would have you believe, um, supporters of other teams and the media in this country, that Rangers fans are the ones with the problem, and I'll leave a wee pause here for dramatic effect. Yes. So, um, I think the bit, is, the, bit, the bit that I just can't understand, mate, is the, the whole mentality of it, the, the big bad Rangers thing, and if you're a true supporter of football, you're a true supporter of your club, you want your club to do as best as you can, you cannot stand there and have an argument with me and tell me that Clancy had a good game. And the amount of comments that the people were flying in saying, oh, it's, you've not had a sender off and such and such, it's got nothing to do about when we had our last player sent off. It's the fact that that guy's an incompetent ref. And that in itself, mate, people that want to defend that, just because it was a bad refereeing performance against Rangers and we take the, the hump with it, that's a problem with Scottish football. No, it's a, listen, 
there's so many people in Scottish football who are blinded by hatred. Hatred of Rangers, I think it mixes into two generations. A generation where they couldn't accept what we did in the 90s. We were the superior team, we were a superior club, the quintessential club, which we always will be and always have been. There's a generation that couldn't handle that in the 90s, and that's continued on to the next generation who can't handle that we went down the divisions and have bounced back and stopped whatever they want to call it, the 10, whatever it was, it's the 10. And they can't handle that. And there's just this, it's a fashion now to hate Rangers and shoot Rangers down for anything. In terms of what we spoke about the other night there, I don't think any of us shied away from the fact that Rangers were poor. Rangers mm-hmm. didn't play well. Rangers didn't deserve anything from the game. But you, you cannot talk about that game without talking about Kevin Clancy and how poor he was. I'm not saying Kevin Clancy cost us a result. Far from it. Kevin Clancy is horrific. He's the worst referee in Scotland by a country mile. And everybody knows that. And, and if they want to say that we're playing, I think I've seen a comment saying we're playing the victim card. We're very far away from playing the victim <laughs> card. And I don't think any of us are going to start crowdfunding for a documentary called Anyone But Rangers, which <laughs> another club I'm pretty sure have already done. Yes, yes, very true. Um, like, again, to, to be serious about it, mate, I, I generally want Scottish football to be the best that it can be because my team plays in Scottish football and it always will. It's always going to be like that. So I want to be as best as it possibly can be. I just hate the whole mentality of, but I mean, I'm, I've grew up with it. I've, of course, I expect it. I just hate the mentality of, I, but it's against strangers, so it doesn't matter. Scottish football wouldn't be anything without. Rangers or Celtic for that matter, it wouldn't be anything that wouldn't it wouldn't be worth watching. Um, considering as well, Aberdeen couldn't even sell at their stadium for us to come into town. Do you know what I mean? It's these kind of things that people just don't they don't really think of. And I generally want football to be the best it can be in this country. And with referees like that, there has to be consequences for these guys because the other night was just a joke. And after watching the game back, it's even worse because you're seeing bits that you're not, you're looking at different parts of the game uh, when you rewatch a game. So yeah, it was even worse. It really was. So yeah, I, I, that mentality, I'll never really understand it. But thank you for everyone for tuning in and watching and leaving a comment. Um, you're helping my podcast. I don't care. Uh, and also, just before we move on, mate, God, I've, we're not a lot longer than I thought, going to. Um, I'm very proud of our fans, our subscribers, the people that support our channel, that can come on, have a comment in the wee community that we're having within the comments, mate, and have a debate with each other and discuss it the way that they should discuss it and vent with us and praise with us and everything that goes along with that. Uh, so I would just like to personally thank them um, because it's it's great to have your feedback, it's great to have your comments and we we, we, we love it. It's what it's all about for us. We love to have the interaction with you um, and just ignore the rest of them because it's not really worth lowering yourself to that standard. Enough of that. Right, Ryan, we'll move on to Rangers News. First big bit of news really is Alfredo Morelos has been called up for international duty for Colombia, so it's going to miss the Ross County game and the Old Firm match. Rangers could be without Morelos, Aribo, uh, and Aribo for the Old Firm because Nigeria are doing pretty well in the African Cup of Nations. And we could also be without they two and Ryan Kent for the Livingston game. Um, thoughts on this, mate? What's your thoughts about Alfredo going to international duty? I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and say... Um... I wasn't gutted. Like when the, when the news came through, I think I was sitting and I'd take my son to his football train that came on the radio. Um, that he'd been called up to the Columbia squad, and straight away I just went, Oh, you bastard. <laughs> like, <laughs> Alfie's playing well just now. And um, he's, 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 my, he's my on form guy, he's a goal scorer. So, of course, that definitely, you want, you want your, your strongest team to play against them, especially after what's going on a bit this one a break and stuff. And I do feel if we're four points clear, going there and be, if we beat them, I think it'll end them. So that's why you just want your strongest team. However, do I want us to postpone the game? Do I want us to ask for the postponement or anything like that? No, I don't. I think we get on with this. I think this is now an opportunity for Sakala, who is a good player. He's raw, but it's a great opportunity for him. It's a great opportunity for Itton. We have already played Celtic with a depleted squad this season and no manager and half his backroom staff, and we beat them. 
we can do it again. I've, I'm not worried. I'm just gutted that Alfie's not going to get another opportunity against them because obviously he's put his hoodoo past them by scoring two fantastic goals against them. Um, I just I love seeing Alfie against them now because he's got their number and he does he does run right against them. He always he always hassles them and, and pulls the defenders left, right and centre. So yeah, I'm gutted he's out, but just listen, Rangers move on and we and we go on without Alfie and we'll be, and, and I'm confident we can beat them without Alfie. Aribo's the one got to tease away uh, the AFCON. It's great to see he's doing well and I'd imagine they will go far in it. Yeah, they're playing rather well. I've not really watched much of it. I have seen various clips of it on uh, Twitter and stuff like that. And, and I would mentioned in a tweet that it's a bit like putting all these schemes in Glasgow in a football competition. Um, decent players, yeah, some good football, but everybody knows that it's about to descend into chaos and will descend into chaos at any minute. Some of the <laughs> some of the clips you've seen are just crazy. Like, what is going on here? But in terms of the football, I mean, Nigeria are doing pretty well and Aribo's be, he's been a part of it. So, I mean, I'm, I, I like the fact that we, we are having players getting called up to international duty. We went a long time without having any international players in our teammate. We had this conversation nearly back at the start of this pod uh, when we started, but I, I'm happy that it happens. It's unfortunate the fact that Morelos is going to be away over the, the old firm. But you cannot you cannot really criticise the guy for wanting to go and represent his country. It's what it's all about for him. Uh, really, everybody that knows anything about Alfredo Morelos knows how much he loves Colombia and how much he gives back to his community and communities that are, are worse off than him. Uh, and he constantly goes back and does charity work. So it means a lot to him. It is unfortunate. It really is. Um, and Aribo is just uh, is going to be the biggest miss for me because the guy is on absolute fire just now. And I think he would... Uh, he would have loved a, a wee go at terrorising uh, that lot. So, yeah, it is a shame. It really is. But I know I don't expect Rangers to postpone the game. I expect Rangers to carry on as they always would and get on with it. We've done it once before. I'm sure we can we can do it again. Uh, just quickly, before we move on to the the um, press conference it was today, sorry, lost my train of thought. Um, there was just announced about an hour ago, um, there was a few fixture updates that have been announced for TV coverage. So Wednesday, the March 2nd, St Johnston um, uh, is 7.40, Wednesday, 2nd of March, on at 7.45 kickoff. Sunday, March the 20th, Dundee away at uh, 12 noon. Uh, Sunday, the t- April the 10th, St Murren away, 12 noon. I hate 12 noon kickoffs on a Sunday, man. Like, it's the worst time of day for a game of football. But yes, just thought I would quickly uh, put that in there before we move on. Uh, and just uh, quickly, a, a word from our sponsors, uh, Manscaped. So step up your game with Manscaped's performance package 4.0. Join the 4 million men worldwide who trust Manscaped with the right tools for the job. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code club at 22 at manscaped.com. That's 20% off with free shipping at manscaped.com. Use the code club at 22 have no regrets this year with our friends at manscaped um yeah continue to you'll be continuing to support our podcast if you do go on and do that use our code and thank you to you those who did generally not just saying it because they sponsored us their stuff is so good as they are it is genuinely brilliant I, I absolutely love everything about the, the the package that they they kindly gave us and yeah if you can go on over there and use that code that would be very much appreciated and thank you to them for their continued support to us so we'll go to the press conference mate um I ahead of the, the Sterling Island game which was today yeah which was Thursday uh, and it was Giovanni van Bronckhurst who spoke to the press first he was asked about the he was obviously asked about the red card he was asked if the the, the two yellows if he's annoyed the fact that he can't he can't appeal it uh, and then he brought up VAR again he said VAR would help the refs a lot especially in the vital moments of the games for a referee it will help to review and improve as we do from our decisions to learn from any mistakes this allows you to improve as a player coach or as a referee I'll stop there Ryan um if you had to put your money on it right now, will VAR be in Scotland in the next five years? Yes. Do you think so? Yes, straight away. Yeah, it's going to be. It's going to be in Scotland the next five years. Yeah, um, maybe not in the next couple of years, but I think it will be in Scotland the next five years. As you know, 
I don't want VAR until it's water tight. I think you're still seeing the wrong decisions. They're stopping games for two, three, four minutes down in England. Um, we've already spoken about this, but I'll just touch on it briefly that they're still making the wrong decisions. They're going to somebody in a room and he's making the wrong decision. So I don't think it's perfect yet. So maybe that might fall in Scottish games' fortunes by the time they do rectify the issues with it and they, they speed decisions up, then it will be a better a better product by the time it comes to Scotland. But I do think it's going that way. Um like I say, I'm not I'm not in favour of it, but after <laughs> after the other night there, I'm very much in favour of it. I think you could get a <laughs> um like Stevie Wonder could probably do better make better, better decisions than that referee the other night there. But yeah, it's um it's something I do see coming into the game. Obviously, that's depending on the financial implications for the, the SPFL, but that's for them to worry about. They're such a fantastic organisation, I'm sure. I'm sure they'll <laughs> work it out. Yeah, I'm sure they've been planning for it, mate. No, I, 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 that's the reason that I don't see it happening, mate, because I don't think they'll make the investment in it. They, I think to in order to do so, they have to make referees full-time first up here. So I, I can't see it happening in the next five years because they're going to need to invest in that first. For me personally, I think the, the best way to improve the, the refereeing standards is to bring new referees through who are fully trained and are going to go full time and do the job properly because right now we are far too used to seeing the old faces and nothing changes no matter what they do or what decision they make. So yeah, I think in order for it to be brought in, I would like to see full-time referees first and see if that brings an improvement. Um but I just don't see the I just don't see the SFA the SPFL putting on the money behind us. I don't um and I doubt there's going to be some rich man going them Cologne and willing to do it for them. So it's an interesting one. Um I think Gio's very for it. I think he's been quite been quite open about that since he came in. He's he's quite keen to see it been brought into Scottish football, but time will tell with that one. Uh, he was asked about the Morelos obviously getting called up for international duty. He said, if you have international games during the league, it can always create difficult situations. I know what the club means to both Joe and Alfredo, but I also know how important it is to play in front, uh, play for your international team. Um, he was asked about the, the who he intends to play. Obviously, there's a good chance to, to play youth players tomorrow night. He said he's always happy to use the Youth Academy players and tomorrow was a good opportunity. Sadly, I can only use three subs in the Cup and it would be good to be able to use five subs as in the league. It will give you more opportunity to play youth players. Make any sort of sense out the fact that you can make five subs in the league but you can only make three in the Cup, mate? Scottish football, isn't it? That's what I mean, we're just sitting talking about VAR and all that. And this, <laughs> that I was like, what? Mental. Nothing makes sense. I'm sure, like, Van Broncos obviously probably knew that anyway, but you'd imagine Roy Mackay and, like, Dave Voss and that are like, hold on a minute, like, you've changed your subs to, to five in the league, but you're only made, like, it just doesn't make sense. There's no consistency, but it really is Scottish football, Scott. It, it's just nothing makes sense in it. Everything's done backwards and disjointed, and there just seems a lack of communication between the SFA and the SPFL. It's nonsense, but yeah, three substitutions, and as I expect, he's going to have Leon King and and uh, who was the boy mentioned today as well? Charlie McCann. I can't remember what was his name. So, I Charlie McCann, but his other one. Charlie McCann. Lowry I, as I well. Think he mentioned, yeah, Lowry. That's thank you, uh, Lowry. I'd imagine Lowry will be about the squad as well, and I'd like to see them get minutes. I would. I'd like to see them get minutes if there's players like. We keep touching on him, but see, see the likes of Lundstrom. See if he's not got, if he has got an egg, um, heading towards the exit door. Don't play him. Play, give McCann a chance. Get let him, let him get some minutes. Um, it'll be great for him. And if he's a, fu- a future Rangers player, then definitely. So, I think Giro's got to pick his squad. He's got to be clever about what he's doing because he's also got to think we've got a lot of fixtures coming up, and we've missed what is that two or three weeks of football. And that winter break, we didn't look sharp the other night there. So he's also got to think to himself, I need to get these players up to up to speed for, for the games that are coming. So it'll be interesting to see what team he picks. Yeah, we'll come on to team selection, mate. But I kind of base mine on that, what you've pretty much said there. Uh, I don't think we were anywhere near it on Tuesday night with standards and sharpness and the way that we looked. We looked very lethargic. We didn't look... It didn't really look like we were... 
clicking or fresh even after the, the, the break. And obviously things happen over, over the break and whatever else, but I would imagine they didn't get that much time off. So I would love if he, he, he could... Oh, well, come on, to, I don't know if he'll make. I don't know if he'll make that much. He'll have that much of a, a risky team, if that makes sense. I don't think he'll go full unrecognisable, if that makes sense. I think there will still be some some mainstays in there. I think there'll be still some starting eleven players that play. Um, not all, however, but we'll, we will come. We will come on to that. Uh, but it would be great to see some of the youth players because they've been performing uh, for the B team. Uh, he did mention it was a good chance to rotate the squad, which is nice. Uh, players that I haven't had uh, much time to grab their opportunity. And then he was talking about the transfer window. He says the window's still open for eleven days. Anything can happen in that time, and we are fully prepared. Uh, he did mention as well from the video that I seen on YouTube today was. Uh, I don't know if it was his way he said it or what, but I kind of went, oh, he's like, I also don't know the state of my squad uh, or the, squ the state of what the squad will be by the end of the window, which kind of makes me think, I'm probably reading too much into it, uh, but I think he's he's almost repaired as well that there could be an offer for somebody. Aye, I thought that as well. But I also think, I said this a couple of pods ago, I also think there are going to be outgoings. There's definitely going to be outgoings, and I'm not just talking about the likes of, again, Lundstrom's and, and Barker's and people like that. I mean, let's hope Barker gets a game tomorrow night, eh? Mm. Just as we can't remind <laughs> you. No! <laughs> Stop mentioning fucking Barker, man, honestly. Uh, God, sorry, I'm going no. to need to start editing these podcasts, mate, because every time you mention Barker, I'm just going to take it out. <laughs> <laughs> there was like a wee alarm in my head there when as soon as I said back. But players like that I think are gonna go out, but there is like I said, like I still can't believe a team I haven't thought about taking a chance a punt on Kamara because he could he could play for MD, he really could. That's how good I, I highly I rate him. And Gio's probably thinking that if there are murmurs that, that somebody's gonna come in for the likes of Kamara or Aribo, surely not. It would take a big offer though, Scott. I don't know if MD's gonna pay that type of money to take them in January because Rangers ain't going to let them go for cheap. So, yeah, it did cross my mind when Gio said it, but he's maybe just thinking to himself, he knows of quite a few outgoings, whether it is the squad players that are going to be leaving, and he maybe just thinks he's going to have to bolster the squad a bit more than he thought he would have to. I, I, I still think Rangers need something else. Um, if anything was to happen long term to Joe Aribo, to Alfredo Morelos, we need something more. Right now, um, again, I, I don't want to be too critical uh, of Hadji because I genuinely think there is a player in there, but right now he's not cutting the mustard for me. I know he scored the other night, but he like as I say, I watched the game back and he done nothing else. He really didn't had very little effect on the game. And I don't think we can put the full trust in him um for when if a rebo's not there, for example, right now. I, I just I think we need somebody else in there. And he blatantly doesn't fancy Bakuna. So um even though spoiler alert, I have put him in my team because I think he might play him just to give him a kind of a last a last op a last opportunity um, to to impress. But yeah, I, I would expect that, and I would expect a a, a right winger as well. Um, I think they are the biggest the biggest kind of rumours or murmurs that people want to see. Scott Wright wasn't great the other night. Um, I like Scott Wright. I've I've never had the fact that I liked him. I always. Always want players that come from Aberdeen to work at Rangers because my stepdad's a, a, an Aberdeen fan, so it's always good when it works <laughs> out. Um, <coughs> but that's not the only reason. I, I was generally quite excited by Scott Wright and what I'd seen before he'd even came to Rangers. I was quite excited to see him, but it's not... He's hit or miss. He's too hit or miss. Uh, and as I mentioned uh, to you, I think it was actually off air. We can't just rely on his pace because all Johnny Hayes had to do was match him for pace the other night, and you need to have more. You need to have yeah. more than to, to do that, there's plenty of fast players in the league, but you need to have the ability to take these players on. <clears throat> in terms of players going out, I mean, there's, there's Connor Goldson thing still unresolved, mate. There could be a contract offer for him on the table from an English team, possibly. Uh, and I would expect if there is, he would go. Surely he would go. That's a good shout. Yeah, that's a good shout. You said the Connor Goldson there, kind of, I think we spoke about this as well. Like, I've kind of forgot about Goldson's outburst after the, the 
semi-final and the fact he's not signed a contract and the fact how poor he was before before Gio come in, I think I've forgotten all about that because of how well he is playing. And obviously I gave him man in a match the night there because I do think he played well. But <coughs> that's did. definitely, the, rea- the reality is that if a team come in and say to Rangers, listen, we'll give you just a bit of money before just to take him now, Golson's gone. Yeah. Like he's gone. If, if if an English team come in, he's gone and that's it. And, and you wonder if that's the kind of thing that might happen at the end of the window and Rangers just push the suit, a suit of thing through and and it's just as straightforward as that. So yeah, Gio's got, there's a lot of balls up there for Gio and it's very much like, it's quite frustrating, but it's it's complimentary to how well these players are doing for Rangers because Gerard faced these headaches at the beginning of the season with Kamara, with Morelos, with Kent, with the Leeds link. So it's just a headache and, and it, I'm sure Gio will be looking for the window to shut, but I agree with you. I think we need to bolster Need to bolster the right hand side more attacking options because there is a lack of creativity when Joe Rebo's not there. There was just a lack of link up between the midfield and the front line, mate. We, we, we didn't really have anything there, and Hadji just couldn't. He couldn't deal with it. Uh, he, Ferguson gave him a torrid time the, the other night. He, he was he was on top of him every time Hadji got the ball, uh, and he kind of nullified him to a certain extent. He said he got the run on McCrory for the goal, Hadji, but. As I say, apart from that, he, he wasn't he wasn't great. Um, so, and I've said it to, I've said it before. I I would I want Yanis Hadji to succeed something chronic because you'll get your money back for him even on the name alone. But if you if he's firing and he's developing and he's getting to to the point where he's a kind of <clears throat> a mid to top level European player, then you're going to get good money for him. Uh, I have said before, though, I don't think Scottish football suits him. I think he would do much better in another league. Not that I want him to leave or anything like that, but I think in a, in a different league, um, not in Scotland, I think he would. I think he would flourish a lot more. Um, so interesting one to see. <clears throat> and just on before we go into the teams. He was asked about the squad. No fresh injuries of concern. Um, Roof will be involved tomorrow, as will Liam Balligan. A little too early for Ryan Jack. Boo! Uh, Arfield trained a little bit today, so we'll hopefully join the team next week, and so will Davis. John Lundstrom also spoke to the, the press today. If you want to see that, go on to the Rangers YouTube channel. Uh, you'll see it all there. Um, it was pretty much just asked, how, how frustrated are you at not playing? If you ask a, f- a football player that, I'm very frustrated at not playing. Like it's the it's just one of them answers. Like, but it, you know what it's like with a player one. It's always a bit hit or miss. I don't mind John Lundstrom actually. I think he handles the press quite well and he speaks very well. But yeah, we'll we'll not get too much into that. Go on to the Rangers YouTube channel if you want to see that. So on to Sterling Albion themselves, mate. Um, they're currently sitting sixth in the Scottish Second League or the Second Division. Um. I feel like they've not had a great run of form, um, to be honest. And I think they're part-time, or at least some of them are maybe part-time. I'm not 100% sure on that. I could be slaughtered in the comments for that. But I think I think they may be part-time. Big tie for them, mate, coming to Ibrooks. It's a huge tie. I'm, I bet their players are, are buzzing for it. Um, Scottish Cup tie, Ibrooks, yeah, it's, it's huge for them. Um, I am... Um, in the camp where I, I, when this draw got made, I think I remember in the group chat, everybody was kind of buzzing because it's a Friday night game and still in Albion in the Scottish Cup. I am, um, I don't want to be disrespectful. I just, I've, I've seen enough of these kind of teams at Ibrox because we went down in divisions and I'm kind of like, oh, we've seen this a hundred times. I think it's just, it's probably, I, I think it was the second division. I remember just being like, the North who's wearing off here. This is I'm ready to see some Premier League football now. But yeah, I'm looking forward to tomorrow. I'm looking forward to a Scottish Cup tie Friday night. I'm looking forward to going to my dad and being back at Ibrooks again. Um Rangers should win the game comfortably. And I want to see is I want to see players getting a chance. I want to see your man Bakuna, as you said, getting a chance because I find it strange that he's not been in the squad. And I think that a lot of Rangers players will be hungry for this tomorrow night, as will the Stirling Albion players, because it's a great opportunity for them. But I think the Rangers players will be hungry as well to put put a few things right and take their opportunity for a congested, congested to say the least, fixture list that's coming up for us. Yeah, and it does give Gio the opportunity to rotate the squad a wee bit, as, as you mentioned, and to, to rest these players. And because, because it is, it's a bit of a mystery with him. Um, Again, I think he's uh, he's got really good footwork. He's 
but he's not really had a a great chance. Uh, he scored a great goal for us, um, but apart from that, he's not really done very much else. But again, he's not really had the opportunity to do so. So tomorrow night might be might be good for him. I'm saying, mate. I, I think I generally I can't remember that if hundred percent it was Sterling Albion, but I remember sitting um, a, a game Rangers against Sterling Albion in the second division. On a Tuesday night, I think, uh, middle of February, pushing down the rain, and we drew one each, and you're like, oh, I'm really sick of this now. <laughs> I think there was about 30,000 people in the I was like, oh, I'm really getting sick of this now. So, um, thank goodness it's in different circumstances now. However, uh, I'm looking forward to going back to Ibrox. I always am. As I say, I'm a day off tomorrow as well, so I've got all day to sit and wait about for it, which is never great. And I'm not even drinking, so I kind of go out for a beer. So, <laughs> yes, it's a weird, weird thing. Usually Friday night, mate, if I was off Saturday, I'd be like, right, I'm out, yeah, let's, let's go. But taking the car tomorrow, still managing to get there, managing to get there. I've only got 11 days left and I can drink, so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it's a choice I'm making, mate. It's my own fault. Uh, so, going to the team, mate, uh, who you think the team's going to be? Now, if either of us get this team right, mate, I will. I don't know what I'll do. I should have thought of that before we started recording. Uh, but I would, I'll be unbelievably shocked if any of us pick this team because this is a tough one to pick because I don't know how his team is going to go. Do you want to go first or second? I'll go first because I'm trying to, as you know, I'm not at home. And I wrote this team out my lunch break today at my desk, and I'm trying to remember <laughs> what the team was I wrote out. So let me go. Um, go. McLaughlin. Mm. McLaughlin and goals. I think it will be a strong back four of Tavernier, Goldson, Balligan, Bassett left back. The only reason I'm dropping Barisic is because I know he struggled with, with fitness. So I'm dropping, I'm putting Bassett out left back. Uh, my two are Lundstrom and Sands. I think he'll stick with Sands. I think the more game time he gets, the better for him because I think that was a hard one for him the other night there. And <laughs> as Rangers Twitter goes and Rangers fans go, I've, seen, I've already seen one person completely write Sands off. Yeah. So we might, we might as well send him back to America. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, aye. So I'm, I'm hoping he gets a run out tomorrow and, um, and starts. So Lundstrom and Sands. My three are, who did I put on the left, right? Up front, I put Sakala. On the right, I put Scott Wright. I think Scott Wright needs a run of games. I don't think he played well either, and I think he'll know he didn't play well, but I think he needs, another, I think he needs a run of games. So Scott Wright on the right. I can't remember who I put on the left, and I put Bakuna behind the strikers. Who have I put on the left? No, I can't remember. But Roof's going to play. I'll put, I'll put Roof in there as well. There you go. Right, OK. Yeah, that's fair enough. I think Roof will um, make an appearance, but not too far dissimilar, mate, to be honest. Um, I think Roof will play, but I don't think he'll start um, just purely on his injury his injury record. Um, obviously, he's always he's always a bit of injury problem throughout his career, so I don't think he'll be flung straight in from the start. I do expect him to get at least half an hour, but I've went McLaughlin, Tav, Balogun, King, Barisic, and what you said, you're probably right, you probably will play Barisic, because I didn't think about that. Lundstrom and Sands as well, mate, uh, Bakuna uh, behind the striker, and I've went Kent Sakala on the right, and Itten up top. Um, I think you want to have a good look at said the Ted and see if he's got anything about him. So that's my team. We are going to be miles off, mate. We're very near that team. Oh, God, no hey. idea what team it be. I mean, Lowry could play. Um, Lowry could play. Um, as I say, there's, there's McCann as well. McCann might play for Bakuna. Uh, that would be great to see. Genuinely, that would be tremendous to see. I just don't know how much of a risk he would take. Uh, uh, but. Put it this way, see if McCann starts ahead of Bakuna, I would say that's the end of Bakuna. I would, <laughs> like, I would say so. No, dis- and, that's no disrespect to McCann with that, I mean. I, I, and you know, Scott, I wouldn't be surprised if he did, because for me, Bakuna feels as if he's totally out of favour. He's an, mm. an attacking midfielder, and there's been a couple of games where you're like, right, you need an attacking midfielder on, and he ain't even warming up, like, so... It kind of does look like that, so I wouldn't be surprised if you don't see Bakuna tomorrow night, but I've also kind of contradicted myself in this pod that 
I've said he needs to give young boys a chance, and I've not actually played it. I've not put any young boys in my lineup, but I do think mm. Gio. I think it is a hard decision for Gio to make whether he plays young boys tomorrow night or he needs to get Matt Sharpness into the players for these games coming up. So it is going to be interesting to see what this lineup is. Definitely, I'm intrigued to see it. I, I, I really would like to see uh, a few, a few of the youth academy get a get a game. I really would. I just to say, I don't know how much of a, a risk he would take, and I feel like I'm just going to sit here and say loads of names, mate, so I can eventually claw something back and say, "Oh, I did say that. I did say that in a pod." But no, I wouldn't expect that to. I don't. Might be the team. Um, show who I think he will play, not who I particularly would like to play. Um, your score, mate. I'm going four now, and I'm going uh, fashion Sakala hat trick. I think the man from nice. Zambia will get his get his hair cut tomorrow night, and I think he will be hitting some form and looking sharp for all these games coming up. Where he'll, I'm sure he'll be the man to replace Alfie. So Sakala hat trick four now. I'm going three now, and I'm going Ryan Kent to score first. Um, a bit of a reaction from Tuesday night, and. I think Itton will score. Um, I'd quite like to see Itton get a game and score. So I'll go for Kent to score first, Itton to score anything. Uh, don't put their bets on because probably neither of them will play. <laughs> uh, but that'll do us tonight, mate. A bit of a shorter one, obviously. Uh, thank you very much for your time, mate. I'll probably see you outside Ibrooks tomorrow night. Yes, probably see you outside Ibrooks. I hope everybody enjoys the game and enjoy being back at Ibrooks. Let's hope that we're never locked out again the way we have been. And also, everybody keep calm. Rangers are champions and we're top of the league. Relax. Keep calm. Exactly, mate. One game lost in 60 league matches. It's not a bad record to have going in our favour. So, ignore. I think that's... Four lads had a dream. I think it's ignore the noise and the irrelevant. I think that's their... um, I think that's his saying and what a fitting saying for the time that we are we're having just now but yeah cannot wait to get back to Ibrooks tomorrow night really looking forward to it um, not the, the the highest of of um, calibre opponents no disrespect to them but I uh, I still can't wait to to get there get back to back to my seat so shameless plug as always from me please subscribe to the YouTube channel like the videos give us a wee five star review on Apple Podcasts leave a comment and follow our socials it supports us and helps us get out to as many people as possible big thanks you to Rangers on Tour as well who have shared a lot of our stuff and have helped some subscribers of our social media and of our YouTube channel jump up so big thank you to uh, Chris and the guys over there and remember you can join the channel uh, from the 99p or you can buy the podcast a coffee and that would be very much appreciated Appreciate So we will be back in one form or another. Might I think it might be me and you tomorrow night after the game. I think it will be yeah. me, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. So we yeah, we'll be back at some point after the game. Might have to record it when we get home due to me and Ryan pretty much living the other ends of the country from each other. But <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh we will definitely be some some form of reaction um after the game tomorrow night. So enjoy the game if you're you're going to the game. Uh, enjoy watching it if you're sitting watching it in the We'll be back tomorrow night. So we are Club at 22, the Rangers podcast. I'll speak to you all next time. Cheers, folks.